What's good, comic fam? We are back from Dallas. Just got off the airplane. There are record breakers to discuss. Let's talk about the comics defining this generation of collectors. Another one. Another list. Gem Mint is moving. It's your boy, Gem Mint. Congratulations. We got the Golden Age Guru in the house. How you feeling, Jeff? It can. Man, I'm freaking super stoked because, A, I'm not moving. <laughs> because everybody knows how much that sucks. But this list is freaking dope. There's a comic on this list that sold in the same grade for a difference of over $100,000 in price. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button. We're here every week talking about the hottest comic books in the world. And Jeff hit him with number 10. And that's Uncanny X-Men number 50, came out in 1968, a great Stranko cover. We have the second appearance of Polaris, who first appeared in the issue prior, also Stranko cover, number 49. This book also has the origin of Beast and the birth of Beast and his story of getting his abilities. This is the perfect storm for a key comic book classic cover. It is a beautiful Stranko cover, as mentioned, but really when it comes down to it, is there a better looking cover in the first 100 issues of X-Men? I think not. No, because when you go through it, you think about like issue 12 is pretty amazing. It's got Juggernaut. Juggernaut's dope. Right? And but I'm but talking about sexy covers, you know? Outside of just sexiness and just the eye appeal, depth. Style. Style, right. I mean, this cover has everything and it's and it's got such a great value. Not because it's a second appearance and all these things, but really because it's such a standout issue. It reminds me of like Silver Surfer 4, all right? An instant classic because of what is on that cover. Not because it's that really that important. This is the issue where Steranko was finally fed up enough with the X-Men logo because he was complaining a lot because he hated how it looked like prior to this issue. And he changed it to the slant. That powerful change would become the legacy logo to this day. We have some record breakers to discuss. A 4.5 sold for $412 in September. Now we got a record-breaking price up 3% for $425. And 9.4 sold for $2,040, the second high sale just behind a $2,100 all-time high. That's basically the same amount, Jeff. This book is selling strong, especially when you look at the incoming trickle effect. A 9.8 last week sold for $5,200. Seven days later, an increase of 11% selling for 5760 hot damn. Comic fam, hit the like, slap the subscribe. We cover this list every week as mentioned because of the most powerful collector's app in existence, Key Collector Comics. Use code TOM101 to unlock a free two-week subscription. Get access to the Hot 10 prior to our video coming out every single week. This is where we source all of our data from. And at the list at number nine, the biggest, most sought out after, modern blue chip book, the first appearance of Miles Morales in Ultimate Fallout 4, the 1 in 25 Dejevic variant. We have a new record leader for a 9.8 to discuss. This is an extremely modern book, so most of them are going to be in pretty high grade. So to see the opportunity that an 8.0 sold for 3500 in 2021, up 21% and sell for $4,250. Now, this book in a 9.8 has been selling in the 30K area for quite a while now. However, there are two recorded above $40,000 sales, and they happen this very month. We have the prior record in October being set for $30,900. Well, June 11th, there was a $40,250 sale on Comic Link. And then this past week, for an increase of 32% since the record-setting sale last year, selling for $40,800, the new all-time high for this book. $40,000 is a lot of dough. Crazy, right? There are many, many, many books you can buy, obviously. All right, and we have to dive in and take a look at these because there's 156 nine eights. So if we really think about that, it's not exceptionally rare. Amazing Fantasy 15, first appearance of Aunt May and Uncle Ben. For 40K, you can get a 3.5 in this market, and there are 228 copies on the census currently. FF1 and a 5.0, 101 on the census, $40,000 right there. Tuma Dracula 10, you can get a 9.8, and there are 49 copies of those on the census. That's the first appearance of Blade. How about the first appearance of Black Panther? FF52, 15 copies and a 9.6. 40,000 bucks right there. You can get a 9.4 of the first appearance of Dr. Otto Octavius, Amazing Spider-Man 3, for $40,000. And there's only nine copies of that book in that grade on the census. And if you like Madness, and you like Doctors, Strange Tales 110, first appearance of Doctor Strange, 32 9.0s. So for that same dollar amount, you can get an extremely high grade 
for first appearance of a major Silver Age character. We know the value of Ultimate Fallout 4. We know the potential of Miles. What do you think about this book, especially in high grade, compared to what you could get from the Silver Age? Let me know in the comment section below. It'll answer you to win this, it's over there, Omni-Man Invincible number one, Tyler Kirkham variant, and let's move on to Silver Surfer at number eight. In at number eight, Fantastic Four number 48. This 1966 key, which is a massive book in the FF run, is the first appearance of Silver Surfer. Cameo parents of Galactus. We know these characters are coming to the MCU sometime. We just saw Reed Richards in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. We know that Invisible Woman exists, plus there are kids. Inevitable indeed. We have a 1.0. It's second all-time high sale selling for 1230. The all-time high was 1400. It's selling consistently, and I bet that that buyer would have paid more money if there was someone bidding against them. A 7.5 sold for $5,900. That is up 4% when you look at the 12-month average. This is where waters run deep, guys. We're talking on the high end. The 9.6 just sold for $37,200. Last year, we saw it sell for $38,000. It's only $800 less. So just second highest overall for this book to ever sell. You heard that right, comic fam. No record breakers that we just reported on. Just consistent high dollar sales. This book is up 2 to 300% since 2020. Moving on to number seven, Amazing Spider-Man number one, debuting in 1963. The second appearance and first ongoing title of Amazing Spider-Man, Peter Parker. Clearly a massive book in this collectible, all right? Like the previous book, though, not every sale is going to be a record breaker. We've seen highs and lows in the collectible. In 2021, this comic book would have sold for $30,000 in a 5.0, but we just saw a drop over $10,000 with a June 8th sale at $19,277. Now in 2020, this book sold for a low in that grade, of $8,200. So yes, the book dipped, but what's your opinion on that dip? This is those situations that I run into in the collectible hobby. You have people who freak out when the prices are too high, so then they get afraid to buy a book. But yet when the book recedes and it drops, they don't take that opportunity to pick up these keys because now that they're afraid of getting caught with something on the drop. So for me, I'm like, if you're comfortable with buying the book, buy the book. Your worst decision is never picking it up because you will never get it again. Because you will never buy it when it's on the way up. This week, a 0.5 and a 2.5 clocked in their second highest graded sales in comic history. The 0.5 sold for 6,500 and the 2.5 sold for 13,484. The 7.5 we have a record breaker. Last September selling for $51,660, up 9%, now selling for $56,400 this week. We just saw a 9.2 sell for $168,000. That tied the all-time high just last year of November. That's strong. Someone feels like that's a safe bet. This book is a safe bet because it's a blue chip Silver Age key. I will never have a problem putting my money in a book like this. So if there's opportunity to catch it on the down, that's when I am most likely looking to grab it. Oh, and number six on the list, we have a pre-hero issue in Tales to Astonish 27, debuting in 1962. This is the first appearance in Origin of Hank Pym, who would later become Ant-Man, Goliath, and Yellow Jacket. Don't forget about Giant Man. And also, let's remember, this title was a tryout title for characters. And it's kind of a horror cover, if you think about it, somebody being pulled up, like away by bugs. So it's really an interesting cover to eventually become something so important in this universe. Take a look at this. We have a 4.0 going for $4,200 in March, up 12%. Now selling for $4,715. This is a tough book to grab in any grade, isn't it? Not a very common book at all. You don't see it on the show floor as much as you see others. But a really fun book to own, and I think it needs to be more appreciated and recognized. Especially in 7.5 or higher. In 2018, a 7.5 would have sold for $12,600. But we just saw one sell for $16,000. 27% higher than its previous sale. A 7.5 is tough, Jeff. But how do you feel about a 9.0 coming to the market? Because we haven't seen one since 2013 when it sold for $40,000. This is called opportunity. Those people who can afford that will look at this book and be like, wow, I have a chance to own a mega character's grail in an unbelievable grade for this book. It sold for an increase of 65% selling for $66,000. Hot damn. Let me elaborate on why I think this is a good deal. 
All right, let's look at the census count for a moment. There are only nine in 9.0 and just alone three higher. And when you look at a mega blue chip Silver Age book like Fantastic Four number one, there are 11 copies that exist in a 9.0 with eight copies graded higher than that. And I call that a tough book. At the list at number five, Ghost Rider number one, we have the first solo title featuring Johnny Blaze, Ghost Rider, and major rumors circulating about Kevin Feige possibly teaming up with these Stranger Things producers to back the macabre meets the superhero, the most unique superhero of all time. Consistency. It's obviously what we've been discussing, plus that there being a little bit of a lull at, at time to time with some of these books. But this book just sold in the 3.5, only $5 less than it did last year for $415. We also saw the 7.5 sell for $845, which is just also $5 less than the 7.5 sale last year. That shows consistency indeed. The 8.0 last week went for $1,067. But Comic Fam, it's been seven days. It ain't last week anymore. It's up 51% selling for $1,608 this week. That 51%, that's a huge percentage. But let's talk about the record-breaking number in a 9.4. We just broke the $3,000 barrier. This book sold in February of just this year in a 9.4 for $2,751 and just broke to $3,200. An increase of 16%, first time ever in comic history. The news about Stranger Things makes me so excited about what Ghost Rider could do in the marketplace. Stranger Things just broke records. Their debut of season four was the highest watched hours of any show on Netflix. Imagine what can happen with the creative team that did that for Marvel. I love Stranger Things. I think they will crush Ghost Rider. If you enjoy what we do and want to support the show directly, Go to the link in the description. Go to comictown101.com and join the June Mystery Mail Call. We've teamed up with legendary artist Gary Frank to release a variant cover on Daredevil number one with a classic Electra. This comic is going in one per box. We curate a box of comics and send them to you monthly. 35 bucks plus shipping in a box with care. At the list at number four, shout out Reggie Collects because you called this spec, debuting in 1964 with the first appearance of Wonder Man in Avengers number nine. Boy, did Reggie ever nail this one. You have the first appearance and the death of Wonder Man. And this Disney Plus show that's coming out is going to be directed by the same people who put together Shang-Chi. News blowing my mind this week. We're getting Wonder Man on Disney Plus, and we have multiple record breakers to discuss because of it. We have a 4.0 going for $400 last week, up 3%. Selling for 411, more consistency, but the 4.5 is up 7%. Prior record being set in September for 425, up, selling for 456 this week. The 5.5 five sold for 575 in August. All right, we just had a sale for 625, up 9%. The 7.0 sold for 1,050 in 2021 up 13% to $1,186. This is a character who, at death, his brainwaves were removed courtesy of Hank Pym to then later create the vision. If only the vision needed a story arc where he would come back to his old self. So does this possibly mean, since we're getting a Wonder Man, will there potentially be a connection to WandaVision and that new white vision? Let us know in the comment section below. Is this speculation just crazy? Or are we starting to see clearly at the list at number three, Journey into Mystery 83, the first appearance of Thor debuting in 1962. We have a 3.0 record breaker and I have a new 3.0 on the set. I'm feeling pretty good. You have to be feeling good on your white page or copy for this set because the 3.0 that sold here in October was $13,000, up 2% now, at 13225 with off-white to white pages. We have a 7.0 going for 40800 back in April, up 53%. Members getting excited about Thor Love and Thunder, I suspect. Now selling for 62500 Hot damn. Love and Thunder, love in comics, because the 9.0 sale, that was astonishing. Up 21%. We saw a sale in 2021 for $87,000. It now just sold for one hundred and five k. Breaking the $100,000 barrier in a 9.0 for the first time in comic history. The God of Thunder has arrived at the list at number two. Incredible Hulk number one, the first appearance and origin of Dr. Bruce Banner, the Hulk. 
and Betty Ross and Rick Jones and General Thunderbolt Ross. Thunderbolts again. I digress because we have a 3.5 selling for $21,000 in 2021, up 14% selling for $24,000 this week. The 6.0. Last year, in March, sold for $35,601, and that's up a staggering 77%, now selling for 63 k Then we have a 7.5 back in March, going for $106,200, up 2%, now selling for $108,100. A 2.5 just sold for $18,300. That's down 8% from the all-time high of $19,999. A 3.0. So for $26,450, down 4% behind the all-time high of $27,500. The 7.0 sold for $77,000, down 8% behind the $84,000 high. What are your thoughts about these prices? Were these potential good grabs, or are you worried about how Hulk 1 is performing? This is one of my favorite Silver Age covers, period. So for me, I'm not concerned about it. If I'm concerned about this, then I'm concerned about all kinds of books in the comic books. I feel very secure with the hobby. I feel very secure putting my money in this book specifically. These are minor highs and lows. It's just about shopping smart and making the right choice at the right time. And that's what someone did. But for the most part, this is like apples to apples. They're, the, they're, the percentages are so small. Long-term gains are what you're looking for. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button. We're here every week for the comic fam and go to the description and follow the Golden Age Guru on Instagram. You know, the link is down there. We have arrived at the number one book, the hottest book in the cosmos of any multiverse, of any timeline, of any variant. We have Fantastic Four number one, the first Marvel family, debuting in 1961. And we have an 8.5 that we're going to discuss that in one month sold twice for a difference of over $100,000. We already know this is a mega book, but if it wasn't already clear, we did have a 9.2 sale this year in April for $1.5 million. Hit him with the 7.0 this week because it went up 8%. The 7.0 sold for $75,000 in 2020 and is up 8% now for $81,000. All right, we have an 8.5. Now walk with me here, Comic Fam, because in 2021, shout out Comic Butch, it sold for $132,000. We saw... Earlier in June, a sale, an increase of 165% on Comic Connect, and it sold for 350 grand. Wow, a staggering sale, especially when we tell you what the 9.0 went for. But before we get to that, there was an 8.5 just a week later this week that sold for $240,000, a difference of 110,000. Make that make sense, Guru. Before I can tell you that, I need to tell you what the 9.0 sold for. We had a sale of 264000 in 2021, but it just sold for $420,000, up 59%. So let's make this 8.5 make sense. The first sale was for $350,000 at the beginning of June. What about this comic book was special? Because there was a sticker on there, not on the comic, but on the slab. You might be wondering, why the hell is there a sticker on the slab? Okay, there's a CVA and a QES. These are optional stickers that you could potentially get to give you as a purchaser the understanding that this is more than just an 8.5 or a 9.0. It's got exceptional eye appeal, and that's what the sticker designates. Certain grades, it really matters about vibrance, the inks, the placements, how it was printed. And when you have that sticker, there's an added layer of confidence. This jumble of three books comes down to timing, awareness, and what's available in an auction at any given moment. So we have a $350,000 sale that took place on June 9th. Then the 9.0 hit the market this month, June 16th. It set the record $420,000. And then the 8.5, the very next day on June 17th, sold for two hundred and forty k. That 9.0 and 8.5 were both in the exact same auction. So by seeing that 8.5 sale of 350, it then told the person who was bidding on the 9.0, which is the book that came before the 8.5 sale, that, hey, this is the number I should be paying for that 9.0. But when it came around to get that 8.5 the next day, either the buyer pool was smaller or the people were just not as confident that two 8.5s just sold in a week 
so the price was a hair weaker. So whoever owned that $240,000 copy that consigned it was probably a little pissed. And I'll tell you, after looking at the graders notes for both of those eight fives, I think the owner of that nine O is feeling pretty damn good. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button. Comic fam, we need your support. We just got back from Dallas and immediately hit the mic for you, the best community in the world. As always, geek responsibly. Nuff said. Comic fam, join myself and this guy every single Wednesday on the best new place to buy and sell collectibles. What not? Available for both Androids and iPhones. Dollar start auctions that last as little as 15 seconds long. We also have two other videos for you to check out. We made them for you. Keep up on the marketplace and have a great week.